Hold on to your aprons, folks. Just one minute ago, Hell's Kitchen was abruptly cancelled after a jaw-dropping discovery rocked the show to its core. What exactly went down? Stick around as we dive into the shocking details that led to this explosive twist. Now, if you've watched even one episode of Hell's Kitchen, you'll know that the pressure is about as real as it gets. Come on, Garrett! Second, only to like Ninja Warrior or Survivor or something. I mean, there have also been times where contestants have literally passed out right in the middle of the service. And I think you know who I am talking about. So was the pressure too much to handle? Useless. Shut up. What the fuck is going on? Hey, hey, come here, you, yeah? Was the show putting contestants at risk of much more than just losing an opportunity to work under Chef Ramsay? Or did Chef Ramsay actually piss off the viewers and contestants so much that they just couldn't bear to do another season? Well, the possibilities are endless, but people are now coming out to talk about it. Just like this contestant here who was over and done with Chef Ramsay's way of handling the kitchen. Off you, you fat, useless sack of f***ing Yankee Danky dude. Yeah, some hard-hitting words right there. But was it necessary to bring up his weight? I mean, of all things, did fat shaming almost burn Ramsay's show? See, Chef Ramsay is often known to crack a joke or two about a contestant's weight. Now, I'm not saying it's okay, but come on. The man simply can't resist a good burn. Yeah, do me a favor. Yes, chef. Take that off and f*** the fan of it. Get out! If you ask me, Chef Ramsay's fiery temper and brutal honesty are trademarks of Hell's Kitchen. I ain't trying to make him proud of me anymore. But has the heat gotten too hot in the kitchen? Now, let me remind you about what happened in Season 5. This season stands out for allegations of Chef Ramsay fat-shaming Robert. Poor Robert just wanted to stand up to Chef Ramsay's expectations, and look what he got in return. I'm trying to do the best I can for you. Why is it so f me? It's not about me, it's about you. Yeah, Chef Ramsay making derogatory remarks about Robert's weight isn't exactly the most unheard of thing in the world. While the exact details remain unclear, the accusations point to a form of bullying that doesn't sit well with modern audiences. Hey, bozo, I just watched you. Fat shaming is just kind of gross these days. And Robert, who is at the receiving end of this criticism, can be forgiven for being more done with it than you and I could be. Chef Ramsay, kiss my... He finally decided to face the world and expose the truth on camera. Not just Robert, even Raj was a victim of it. Now, I know this dude was a handful, but hey, he was also a target. Ah, disgusting! However, Raj's dishes weren't exactly getting the reaction he expected. That was a little harsh. But Chef Ramsay didn't stop there. After all, mockery is that one special ingredient he never forgets to throw into the mix when appropriate. What a f***ing bozo. Appropriate to him, anyway. Now, all that humiliation, you would expect Raj to try and get better, but wait till you see what happened. Well, I think Chef Ramsay was a little too harsh on him in the kitchen. First, he yelled at him for serving uncooked food and screamed, saying, Shut your fat mouth. And this was just the start. What he did next really sealed the deal. Look at his eating, look. Have you got enough in there? Poor guy had to start from scratch. One viewer even commented that the dish could have just been microwaved for a few minutes instead of smashing and shouting at him to start again. But, well, I guess Bobby here doesn't know how much Chef Ramsay hates microwaves. However, hey, that doesn't mean what happened to Raj was right. See, thanks to Chef Ramsay being, well, himself, Hell's Kitchen gained a reputation for fat shaming. And who knows, maybe as a result of it, the sponsors might have jumped ship, leaving the show financially burned. Well, I'm asking the question! Plus, as if being labeled for fat shaming wasn't enough, Hell's Kitchen came under the fire for promoting sexism too. And not just the show, the man himself, Gordon Ramsay came into the spotlight for making more than a few derogatory remarks of his own. This time, Chef Ramsay found himself in a different kind of heat than he's used to at his 9 to 5. The heat of public backlash. Now, this wasn't a burnt souffle or a raw steak. It was a 2010 interview with Sofia Vergara on The Tonight Show that left a far worse taste in everyone's mouth. I never screamed like that in real life. I'm yes. in the bedroom. As soon as she entered, he made such an ugly comment on her screaming. Oh, you could tell that she was visibly so uncomfortable with this. I mean, can you imagine if someone sexualized the way you eat a pizza? Pizza with a knife and a fork. You just pick it up and And for that, I do stand by this gentleman's comment here that reads, It's like two 13-year-old boys who have never had a conversation with a girl before. Because, for real, he was indeed acting like a teenage boy. But wait, it doesn't end there. And what did Ramsey do? You gotta see this yourselves. And it tastes like fudge. <laughs> Not just that, he stood on the couch and did this. Honestly, if someone spat out my sweet dish, I'd probably react the same way. It was so disrespectful. I mean, the whole thing was just so inappropriate. It's, it's, you can take it back to Colombia. And there was no stopping him. I mean, she literally had to ask him to stop touching her. No, I'm not touching! You know it's bad when it's gone that far. 
Ramsey was then accused of inappropriate touching, with clips showing him placing his hand on her thighs multiple times. Yeah, that was really gross of him. Quite expectedly, after the clip resurfaced online, there was a significant public backlash against his behavior. Tons of viewers came out in droves to call him out for being sexist and unprofessional. You best believe that the interview went viral for all the wrong reasons, and Chef Ramsay found himself in yet another bit of controversy. It's safe to say that it broke the hearts of a lot of fans who used to idolize him. So what was the takeaway? What was once considered playful banter is now rightfully getting a second look. And Chef Ramsay, a word to the wise, maybe it's better to keep your hands to yourself. See, the kitchen may be your domain, but boundaries are the universal language of respect, both on and off screen. But here's another issue that became the talk of town. Turns out, he also has a favoritism issue that's been the ire of more than a few people. Did we just see him laughing? On Hell's Kitchen? Man, when hell freezes over, I tell ya. But wait, is Gordon Ramsay biased? Some viewers and contestants have questioned his fairness, suggesting he might be playing favorites for a dash of extra drama. Critics claim Ramsay keeps certain contestants around, even when their performance is subpar, like Elise in season 5. That's delicious. This alleged favoritism, they argue, fuels drama and conflict, which are the lifeblood of reality TV. I mean, look at their faces. They are so in shock. Don't get me wrong, drama is essential, but if you argue that this is not scripted, to which we would circle back shortly, you should also make sure that at least you are true to the audience. Elsie, congratulations. And let me tell you, she made the most generic soup to ever exist. And here's how he treats everyone else. Yeah, because that looks like Dubri's dog's dinner. And you've gone far too way past now to start serving me slop. Now, let's simmer down with the accusations and see if we can make sense of the truth here. So, how competitive was she, really? Every single challenge be better than you at dinner service, and that's just the type of competitor I am. Elise, despite numerous mistakes and meltdowns, made it surprisingly far in the competition. I know I've called it out plenty of times myself. This fueled suspicions that Chef Ramsay was manipulating the situation to have a dramatic effect. You might know that reality TV editing can be notorious for manipulating narratives. And this raises some serious questions. Did the show highlight Elise's blunders to create a villain for viewers to dislike? I've never met anyone so resilient in all my years as you. Was it all just a PR stunt? Some argue that strong contestants with minimal drama get eliminated seemingly out of the blue. This suggests a calculated move to keep the weaker personalities from conflict. Now, I don't know about you, but I sense arrogance in her tone. I'm still the same Elise who really doesn't care what people think. Well, I think a lot of people do hate her. Speaking of backlash, here's another question that comes up way too often. Is Ramsey's volcanic rage about to blow up the show? You shit. So, here's another theory for the show ending. Chef Ramsey is as famous for his culinary expertise as he is for his epic meltdowns. And you're slipping big time. Now, were these outbursts that initially put Hell's Kitchen on the map responsible to bring it down as well? All the contestants, at some point, have this thought that they just can't please Chef Ramsay, and it isn't a lie. You dirty pig! But is his signature raw scream and mid-service contestant elimination a recipe for disaster? Has Chef Ramsay's hell become a bit too, well, infernal? Now, you might think he would be a little nicer to women, but hell nah. Look at the way he speaks to women in the kitchen when they mess up. You, you, you. Upstairs. Get out! Obviously, every insult has fat shaming included. Like some big fat king slob. And how furious did it make the contestant? Well, see for yourself. He's lucky that I signed a thing saying I wouldn't, I would never touch him. So, did they conspire against him? Well, in one episode, they did serve raw chicken for the chef James's wife. Raw chicken will f kill you. His pregnant wife. Well, that was a hard pass, but I think the contestants are so fed up with his shouting that this doesn't even matter to them anymore. Get out! Yup, she just left silently. I guess everyone has their limits, right? And when dealing with a madman, those limits are pretty tight. Well, I think what was once considered tough love on reality TV now feels more like a televised public beratement. Like I said, madman. Contestants are humans, and this type of behavior only discourages them and perhaps even leads them to depression. I mean, what happened with this next contestant was absolutely unfair. Are you blind? Not surprising why critics are starting to turn up the heat on Chef Ramsay's methods. So, what do you think? Is the constant barrage of insults and verbal garbage entertaining, or just plain cruel? Does kicking contestants off mid-challenge really test their skills, or is it just for the ratings? Well, here's a look at some more of his bullying. I'm gonna kick you out any minute now! And to add to that, what is Hell's Kitchen without some fire amongst contestants? Plus, sometimes, fire in the kitchen as well. Okay, more than just sometimes. And does it lead to Chef Ramsay's mood swings? 
You bet. I mean, in this episode alone, the food burnt three times. I think they definitely were burning the kitchen down that night. Let's face it, watching a grown person cry over a slightly overcooked scallop isn't exactly heartwarming entertainment. It doesn't hurt, does it? Does, does no, nothing it does. I can't yell. I can't cry. Can you hear his voice shaking? Is this what we want to watch online? Is this the content we wait for? Right now, I'd rather eat food and shit. The controversy surrounding Ramsey's behavior could have definitely contributed to its near cancellation at some point or future cancellation, if not addressed. Speaking of behaviors, one thing that led viewers down was the suspicion that the show was scripted. Come on, surely you're better than this! Okay, now watch this clip and tell me it doesn't remind you of basic reality TV shows. Relax, girl. It's true, Chef Ramsay's fiery temper and the high-pressure kitchen of Hell's Kitchen have captivated audiences for over two decades. But beneath the sizzling steaks and screaming chefs, a simmering question has always bubbled. Is Hell's Kitchen real, or is it all a meticulously crafted culinary drama? Well, here's another example to solidify these claims. I'm don't, not saying you don't. Well, He's don't told me to help you. Don't I know, but you don't to cut it. See, many viewers believe the show is heavily scripted, and this perception has brewed a storm of controversy, almost leading to the show's cancellation. Did he tell you to f***ing tell me what to do? No. Get out of here! The most potent ingredient in the scripted argument is the power of editing. Reality TV producers are masters of manipulating footage for maximum drama. It's not a fire yet, you dumb little Scenes can be spliced together, confessionals strategically placed, and certain moments amplified to create a specific narrative. I mean, come on, let's be honest, do you really think this happened in reality? I've got no idea what's going on. I am lost for words. Lost for words? Or forgot the script? Viewers often point to the editing of Chef Ramsay's outbursts as a red flag. The show focuses heavily on his explosive reactions, showcasing the most scathing comments and dramatic tantrums. Did these outbursts truly happen organically throughout the service, or were they strategically woven together from various moments to create a more volatile Ramsey? Oh my gosh. Get out! Another element that raises eyebrows is the recurring presence of a foil contestant. Someone who consistently makes mistakes, clashes with Chef Ramsey, and provides a steady stream of dramatic fodder. So, was this contestant simply having a rough run, or were they subtly nudged towards specific behaviors to heighten the drama? Why do we have that up, guys? I said I needed three minutes! Suspicions also arise when seemingly impossible challenges are thrown at contestants, like instances where sabotage with broken equipment or deliberately complex dishes can create guaranteed meltdowns. How about you don't do sh to be sorry for? Are these challenges truly a test of culinary skill, or are they simply a recipe for predetermined chaos? Well, I am no cook, but it all seems too dramatic to be true. What do you think? And then, of course, there is the theory of the broken promise. A controversy that has contributed to the show's potential downfall is the unfulfilled promise of the grand prize. Central to the show's allure is the prize, a head chef position at a prestigious restaurant. This promise fuels the relentless competition, pushing contestants to endure Chef Ramsay's legendary wrath and grueling challenges. However, for some winners, the reality fell far short of the televised dream. Early seasons of Hell's Kitchen saw several winners face a harsh truth. Promised the title and responsibilities of an executive chef, they found themselves offered lesser roles, sous chef, senior chef, or even line cook positions. This bait-and-switch tactic left a bitter taste for these victors and potentially damaged the show's reputation. It was a mistake. It's an expensive mistake. Oh, f me senseless. However, the rumors were put to rest. Even today, Hell's Kitchen remains a force to be reckoned with in the culinary competition world. I can't fucking take it. They didn't even do that in fast food shitholes. But here's some food for thought. What do you think keeps viewers hooked year after year? Is it simply the fiery personality of Gordon Ramsay? Well, I'll get you more pumpkin. I'll ram it right up your ass. Would you like it whole time? Undoubtedly, Chef Ramsay's demanding presence adds a layer of dramatic tension. However, fans believe that Hell's Kitchen is more than just yelling and flying plates. I don't need some limey prick talking to me like that. It's about pushing talented chefs to their limits, seeing how they respond to intense pressure, and ultimately, how they refine their skills through experience and competition. It is here we witness not just meltdowns, but also moments of growth, teamwork, and the sheer joy of culinary creativity. This show gives aspiring chefs a platform to showcase their talents and potentially launch successful careers in the culinary world. From humble beginnings in these very kitchens, many chefs have gone on to open acclaimed restaurants and achieve recognition in the industry. Chef, that's why I called you not a problem. You them and you me. I'm a anybody. Thank you. Thank you. See, Hell's Kitchen may be a pressure cooker, but it can also be a springboard for culinary dreams. So, is Hell's Kitchen here to stay? The answer is, thankfully for my sake, yes.
Now, let's take a look at how this story takes an unexpected turn. Did you know that Damir's elimination made a whole lot of people want to boycott the show's finale altogether? Yeah, and that's just one of the times when Chef Ramsay made unfair decisions during his eliminations. Have really impressed me. Your energy, your passion is evidence. Okay, give me a minute or two to harp on the Damir situation for a second. Try this complaint on for size. I've been watching these shows for years. I've seen wrong picks from Gordon. This was at the top. Damir's elimination has stirred up a controversy the likes of which hasn't been seen since Nick's. When you need help, delegate. Please give me your jacket. Yes, chef. Listen carefully. Yeah, it's that huge. People are upset and enraged, and I definitely don't blame them. Some even called the entire process rigged. And while I don't want to go that far as a first instinct, I think everyone can agree that he deserved a second chance. Though, I'm curious, what was the most unfair elimination on Hell's Kitchen according to you? If you're not sure, I'll be happy to give you a few examples. In what's been dubbed the biggest robbery in the show's history, Hell's Kitchen All-Stars threw everyone a hell of a curveball with its first ever three-way finale. And leading the pack was this contestant, who was the clear fan favorite. I'd always deserve a red carpet. Not only did he undergo a remarkable transformation since season 14, ditching his bitchy attitude and winning hearts along the way, but he also showed incredible growth in the cooking department too. In fact, he stood out as the most improved all-star among the talented bunch. You better not fucking poke me out, you little bitch. I'll That's Nick Peters' bond for you, and fans are convinced the show did him dirty when he got eliminated in season 17. I think Michelle Tribble summed it up perfectly when she introduced him while picking her brigade for the finale. She said, Altered the season, they were the best competitor in all the challenges and dinner. Nick, please. Even Chef Ramsay himself acknowledged his talent, dubbing him the most improved all-star of the season and selecting him as the first finalist. And coming from Chef Ramsay, that's no small compliment. Inviting back. What have you been doing? <laughs> everything, Chef. I've been trying to learn everything. Yeah. Nick himself couldn't believe his ears when he heard it. That, that, that means the world, you know? I'll even admit it. Like, I think I'm a a three-way finale between him, Benjamin, and Michelle was the last thing anyone saw coming. The whole episode had everyone on the edge of their seats, wondering how it would all go down. Would there be three separate kitchens? Three doors? And how on earth would they form the teams? Fans were dying to know. But here's the kicker, the penultimate episode wasn't about to provide anyone any answers. They turned the final tasting challenge into an elimination challenge. Well, who would have guessed? But Nick stayed sure of himself. No pork touching, none of the entrees. Oh my god. Unfortunately, the episode didn't quite live up to the hype. Things got super tense when it came down to the tiebreaker, and the final judge, Mark Fasora, the big boss at Caesars Entertainment, had to announce the last two. And just like that, BAM! He dropped the bomb. Benjamin. Benjamin. Which meant Nick was out. Can you believe it? Fans went absolutely nuts almost instantly, and a wild rumor started spreading like wildfire. Some folks were saying that Mark intentionally axed Nick because he didn't want an LGBT head chef. That rumor is just plain ridiculous and baseless. We've had fantastic LGBT chefs like Christina, Heather, and Latasha who've rocked it on the show. So let's nip that rumor in the bud right now, shall we? But yeah, it's pretty frustrating to see Nick's destiny decided by a hotel executive rather than a seasoned pro-level chef. Do you reckon Chef Ramsay was on board with that call? Well, the survey says probably not. Take this Redditor WonderKid RY93, for example. They couldn't help but notice that season 17 seemed more like a rating stunt and lacked any real stakes. According to them, everything was likely decided beforehand. And why? Well, a series of downright awful decisions, apparently. Ben, Ashley, Giovanni, Van, Dana, and Nick, these talented chefs were shown the door way too soon. They were skilled and reliable, but one slip up or a bad service, and they were out. Meanwhile, drama queens like Elise, Barbie, and Robin seem to get chance after chance after chance. So, basically, this Redditor thinks Season 17 was all about theatrics and didn't care about giving deserving chefs a fair shot, which is why they stopped watching the show altogether. It's interesting to hear Benjamin Nack's take on Nick's elimination. He admitted it was pretty harsh and praised Nick for his skills in the kitchen, his performance in challenges, and his interactions with others. Plus, he added that Nick is the funniest person he knows. I can see where he's coming from. Anyway, it's heartwarming to see Nick enjoying life with his husband and daughter. Really believed in my menu and... Such is life, here we are, sitting on my couch in the kitchen, out of a pot, but... <laughs> well, I can only wish him all the best. And while we're talking about season 17, let's give Giovanni Filippone the spotlight he deserves. 
Seriously, this guy was seriously underrated, especially in Season 5 and Season 17. Back in Season 5, Giovanni was like the unsung hero of the Red Team. I'm one out on a, on a land. Sure, his final service hit a few bumps, but let's be real here, he had just one bad service before that. And get this, he wasn't even nominated when he was on the blue team. And I plan on winning this thing, and I plan on beating whoever's in front of me. I'm coming out of this thing alive. But his elimination in the Cook for Your Life challenge was absolutely unfair. Giovanni was penalized for having too much pasta, but Barbie, who was literally in the exact same boat, got a pass. And let's not forget about the salty oysters and the oyster destroyer herself, Robin. It's like they were playing by different rules or something. Although Giovanni had too much pasta in his dish, he served all six orders. Meanwhile, Millie forgot one order, Elise had salty oysters, and Robin messed up three oysters. And what happens? Giovanni gets the boot. Seriously, who complains about extra food? Yeah, it's tough to admit, but sometimes contestants get eliminated simply because they're seen as boring. And while Nick and Gio may be at the top of this list of most robbed contestants, this one here isn't far behind. Jamie, you're done. Check it off. I can't any further with you. I'm getting no The producers probably wanted more from the Elise Carey dynamic, which led to Jamie Gregorich's elimination in season 9. She wasn't even nominated for the eliminations. Apparently, Chef Ramsay saw that her heart just wasn't as in it as he would have liked. And just like that, she was sent packing. No response. Good night. Bye, Jamie. This left not only the audience, but even Jamie dejected. One of the best chefs in the world that I didn't have what it took to say here. It hurts deep. It is tough to swallow my pride and walk out those doors. <laughs> One of the hardest things I ever had to do. Jamie's gone. I mean, that's just not fair. She wasn't even allowed to defend herself. Worse and worse and worse. Let that be a lesson. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. At the end of the day, I'm a way better chef than- She later took to Twitter to confess that she didn't engage much in all the drama because she chose to show class instead. You know, like a professional executive chef. Shame Chef Ramsay wasn't in the market for one of those. Anyway, she's doing great and is happily engaged to her girlfriend, Caitlyn. In the same vein, let's not forget season 16. When it came to the blue team, skill and personality were seriously lacking. But man, nothing left me shaking my head like this one particular elimination. Listen carefully. Yes, chef. Clearly. You Aaron was the only one holding it together on that team, wasn't he? His elimination felt like it was just for the sake of TV drama. And don't even get me started on Andrew, Devin, and Johnny. They were like a train wreck in that service, weren't they? Evan's cold garnish and Johnny's raw salmon as Chef Ram slightly perturbed. Those three guys were making tons of mistakes, but they were also providing some juicy drama for the show. Johnny became the season's bad guy after his thing with Kimberly, and Andrew and Devin were constantly clashing. But let's be real, conflicts make for good TV, so they weren't getting kicked out anytime soon. Aaron had a solid service with no mistakes, but it seems like the drama overshadowed that. If I were Chef Ramsay, I'd have thought about moving Aaron to the red team and saying goodbye to Mr. I love making women cry, Johnny. Being on a team that appreciated him might have boosted his morale and performance. The supportive atmosphere on the red team could have encouraged Aaron to communicate better and become more confident, unlike the toxic environment on the blue team. Then Matt, who fancied himself an expert, convinced everyone to nominate Aaron for elimination. You know what I've seen? I definitely think Aaron's the one here. I'm looking in the future, guys. Like What? In what way, Matt? Now, while I think Aaron must have been transferred to the red team, here's someone who shouldn't have. Give me your jacket. Yes, chef. Miss Duck. Tonight was your worst performance in this. Hassan Musulmani. In season 15 of Hell's Kitchen, there wasn't a soul watching that was baffled by his elimination. He was a standout chef, no question. Okay, he had one slip up during a dinner service, but come on, compared to others who messed up repeatedly, Hassan's mistake was minor. Hassan's elimination, instead of someone like Jackie, felt like a curveball from Chef Ramsay. Apart from his cooking skills, what made Hassan stand out was his sheer awesomeness. The guy was downright funny. But then, during the fourth service, Hassan, stationed at the appetizers alongside Joe, showed his team player spirit by lending a hand to Kevin on the meat station. Sauce on the boat, come on, fast, fast, fast! My main focus in tonight's day. Hassan's strategic move paid off big time. With the men's entree sailing smoothly out of the kitchen, his vocal leadership and clear direction really shone through. I got two thoughts going to the past. It's all about working. Keep communicating, keep working. 
with Hassan driving. Hassan's assertive guidance was crucial in making sure the red team got all their entrees out successfully with the help of the blue team. Two fish. Good. Okay, let's go. First ticking. Love the teamwork, guys. With a very vocal Hassan. Way to go, Hassan. Chef Ramsay didn't hesitate to give credit where it's due. He called Hassan up front, praising his strong leadership. You know, Ramsay even said Hassan was the most vocal chef that night and recognized how he guided his team to victory. You're the most vocal, the most confident, and you led your team. Now. Chef Ramsay was so impressed that he made a bold move. The Red Kitchen. Both of you, back in line. Yeah, he transferred Hassan to the Red Team. I feel like Chef Ramsay moved him to the red team too soon, and things just went downhill from here. It's like his teammates messed up, and Hassan got the blame for it. If Hassan had stayed on the blue team or got another chance, he could have probably won or at least made it to the black jacket. He had a lot of potential, and it felt like he left the competition too early. They like it. I've been doing this for years. I just want somebody to and tell me you're doing stuff wrong. Even though Hassan tried to help during family night service, reminding Danny about two tuna orders, his voice seemed to vanish in the chaos, like nobody even heard him. It was like talking to a wall. Doesn't he need two tunas or no? I got it. I can talk to him in face. I'm just going to continue to do what I need to do. One New York guy left. How rude is that? But wait, there's more. On their third try, when Hassan's New York strip landed on Ramsey's table, it wasn't cooked properly. Raw for those of you keeping score from home. And that was the last straw for the red team. Chef Ramsay promptly booted them out of the kitchen. All together. Oh. Get out. Get out. What the The red team's communication breakdown and their cold treatment of Hassan really threw everything off, in my opinion. And let's talk about Danny's attitude for a second. She seriously rubbed me the wrong way throughout the season. Hassan was cool and even tried to patch things up with her, but she seemed to have a chip on her shoulder. With Hassan, to find out what the men are doing and the ladies aren't doing, but do it quick. Chef Ramsay had specifically chosen Hassan to lead the red team, but it seemed like Danny couldn't handle it, right? She had to go and mess things up for one of the top guys that season. Was it because she felt threatened? Now, let's flip the script and talk about how Hassan did on Sous Chef Andy's big night. This wasn't just any old night, it was Chef Ramsay's close friend's wedding. Chef Ramsay dropped a bomb on Hassan, giving him just five minutes to get the main table's order ready. So Hassan teamed up with Jared to pull it off, but Ariel was quick to jump in with her criticisms. In time. I need three minutes on the head table. Chef, I mean, Hassan is running around with like a chicken with his head cut off and like cooking the chicken. Hassan hit a rough patch when he served up some pink chicken. The chicken's raw. Oh, man. So Chef Ramsay had to lay down the law, giving the red team a serious warning about the consequences of any more slip-ups. Honestly, I swear to God, one more mistake and I'm gonna kick you all out. Hassan tried to salvage the situation by recooking the chicken, but unfortunately, it still turned out raw. Chef Ramsay was clearly not impressed. You can't do this to me. Who cooked the chicken? I did, Chef. What is going on? I have another one backed up for the head table. Hassan's attempt to rescue the dish was like watching a high-stakes cooking drama unfold. Despite his efforts, the chicken just wouldn't cooperate, and Chef Ramsay's disappointment was palpable. It's like having a winning lottery ticket in the palm of your hand and then dropping it en route to picking up your prize. Some fans speculate if Hassan hadn't stumbled on such a big night, he could have been a contender for the black jacket. Hassan was definitely no slouch in the kitchen. Compared to some of the other chefs, especially Jackie, he was like a shining star. His performances weren't just good, they were stellar. Back when he was on the blue team, he was practically leading the charge in almost every service. Let's be real here. Serving pink chicken once is bad enough, but doing it twice? And to top it off, it was at the wedding reception of Chef Ramsay's sous chef. That's a major mess up, no matter how skilled you are. So was Hassan robbed? What's your take on it? Well, I think Hell's Kitchen might have missed Hassan's talents, but he bounced back on Chopped and snagged the runner-up spot. Way to go, Hassan. Some fans reckon Chef Ramsay dropped the ball by moving Hassan to the red team too soon. And his teammates didn't exactly have his back, making his Hell's Kitchen journey a rough ride. They're pretty convinced that if he stuck with the blue team or got another shot, he could have been a contender, maybe even scored a black jacket. But hey, Hassan didn't let that setback define him. He flipped it into a win with his own catering biz, HNR Food Services, and a food truck called the Drunken Rooster. If you're in Detroit, gotta try those tacos and elotes. Now, let's dive into the sixth service of season six. 
So both teams jumped right into it, grabbing their first orders and diving into making their dishes. But then Andy messes up big time by hearing one scallop order instead of two. And you can imagine what happens next. Cue the blame game. Oh, fucking hell. I'm like, dude, accent, accent, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Hey, come here, you. Come here. Are you doing this on purpose? No shit. Blaming Chef Ramsay because you didn't catch an order? Come on, man. His accent isn't that hard to understand. I got it, Chef. How many scallops on there? Two scallops, Chef. Unbelievable. If he could slow it down a little bit, it would help me out a lot. Guys, no. It's brain dead. And then there's Jim serving up a risotto that all but tore Chef Ramsay's taste buds from his mouth and curb stomped them with its pepper overload. Cue the reprimand session. Peppery! Chef Ramsay, not a fan of the pepper. Yeah, it's a little peppery. Yeah, it's burning my fucking mouth off. Okay. Come on, Jim! Over in the Red Brigade's corner, things got a bit saucy. Ramsay, never one to hold back, launched into a tirade at Tennille for whipping up an abundance of spinach. His suggestion that she could feed the entire neighborhood didn't exactly land well with her. Tennille fired back, saying, Be a lazy cow. He needs to learn how to shove slack. Especially when I'm up there working. On the flip side, the blue kitchen was cooking up its own drama. Jim's second attempt at the dish fell short, resulting in a flavor as exciting as soggy cardboard. Chef Ramsay, in his usual not so subtle style, beckoned the blue team to taste their teammates' creation. You ready? Fuck face! Taste that! Have a look at the shit you're sending! That was just. Over in the red kitchen, the ladies were almost ready with their appetizers when Chef Ramsay called for mashed potatoes from Tanil. But things took a turn for the worse as the potatoes stubbornly stuck to the pot, leaving an inadequate portion for two servings. Fuck off, will you? Yeah? Tanil, remembering the earlier mishap of serving too much, expressed her concerns about making the same error again. Something up to the past is too much. Take something else, it's enough. You just gotta find something to bitch about. And what do you want me to do? Chef Ramsay accused her of treating the situation lightly, despite her apparent genuine concerns. So cool an act for you. Let me just tell you something. You act pathetically. Why did as tensions peaked, Tanil couldn't hold back her frustration any longer. She fired back at Chef Ramsay, matching his derogatory remarks with her own. The shock was palpable among her teammates as the exchange escalated rapidly. Chef Ramsay, offended by Tanil's retort, wasted no time in ejecting her from the kitchen. Tempers flared further as the heated confrontation spilled into the back hallway. Busting my ass! You're you lying. know I am! Let me do my ass! You turn around and tell me that I'm fucking crap. You know I'm or you my fuck ass. off through those doors, You can right. dish it, but you can't that take it! I'm ah, that moment will definitely be etched in Hell's Kitchen history forever. But let's get back to the Red Kitchen. Frustrated, Tanil ordered her teammates to clear her station, clearly not in the mood for any distractions. Meanwhile, over in the Blue Kitchen, Chef Ramsay once again turned his attention to Jim in pursuit of that elusive perfect risotto. His third try didn't quite hit the mark, and you could see Chef Ramsay's frustration mounting. Jim, that's where I draw the line. Scott, yes, yeah, Chef, right now. Chef Scott. To add to Chef Ramsay's growing impatience, the blue team was moving at a snail's pace, stuck at their first table. It took a whopping hour and 15 minutes into service, with a nudge from sous chef Scott, before they finally got their appetizers out. As the red team delved into preparing their main courses, Chef Ramsay's request for chicken sparked a snag. It already went up. I put that up first, Chef. Sabrina boldly insisted that she had already sent it out, but to everyone's dismay, the chicken was nowhere to be found on the hot plate or at any diner's table. Okay, well, it's not here then. Will somebody help me then? I don't have another what do you one. Think we're... No, Chef. But Sabrina was unbothered. Oh, yes, yes, Chef. It's like I need a detective in here. Where's the chicken? In the blue corner, the men kicked off their entrees. But sous chef Scott was quick to notice that Dave had veered off course in the garnish department. Hey, you don't even know what you're doing because you're cooking something we don't fucking need. With his characteristic urgency, Chef Ramsay urged Dave to snap out of it and get back on track. You wake up. Yeah, Chef. Now, I hope you're keeping tabs. Kevin took charge of the entrees in the blue kitchen, stepping into the spotlight. However, his leadership triggered a minor disagreement with Dave, centered around the precise timing for the garnishes. However, the outcome left much to be desired, as the chicken ended up being poorly carved. Chicken properly, yeah? Oh, really? Tell me things anymore. Yes, chef. Don't butcher it. Yes, chef. And use a knife because you're carving chicken. Yes, chef. It looks like a dog's dinner. Over in the blue kitchen, Chef Ramsay wasted no time in calling out the next order, pushing the team into action. But Andy, well, he seemed to have drifted off again, oblivious to what was happening, much to Kevin's frustration. You hear that, Andy? You need to pay attention. I can't read for you. One halibut, yes? Yes, Chef. Chef Ramsay's disappointment hit its peak as it became clear that Andy was about to prepare two halibut portions instead of just one, as required. How many halibut? Two halibut. Oh, God. He can't count to fucking two. 
Then you go to school. And yet, he kept up that cocky act of his. Cool to learn to count. I think you can go learn that if you like. Right behind you. Andy's halibut came out undercooked, and Chef Ramsay was not happy about it. Kevin was on the verge of losing it too. Separate it is raw. Yes, raw! Sir. Raw! Get it back in the oven! Yeah. Andy's just. Man, Andy was just a mess. While the blue team twiddled their thumbs for a good 15 minutes, waiting on Andy's halibut, the red team was on fire, serving up their dishes like clockwork. But just when things were going smoothly, guess who decided to show up again at the hot plate? Hey ladies, all of you, come here a minute. I'm fed up with that, that raw pork. Yikes, raw pork, not exactly what you want to see on your plate, huh? Suzanne, being the sharp cookie she is, knew serving up undercooked pork could spell disaster for the diner's health in more ways than one. It will make you seriously ill. Give me a fucking answer. It's me. But Chef Ramsay delivered a stern rebuke, chastising Sabrina for the error that could potentially jeopardize the diner's health. Yeah, was it? Oh. Oh. Serving up raw pork is a surefire way to get kicked out of the kitchen pronto. And as if that wasn't enough, Andy's halibut saga continued with yet another overcooked disaster in the blue kitchen. Guy just couldn't catch a break, could he? Like a fucking bullet! Fire some more, Chef. Chef Ramsay wasn't pulling any punches, that's for sure. Kevin tried to step in and help out, but Andy waved off his offer like it was no big deal. Dude, give me a know what I'm doing. Kev and to make matters worse, the halibut Andy finally served up was still raw in the middle, pushing Dave to vent his frustration about Andy's sluggishness, which was spot on, really. I gotta slow down, I'm sorry. Come on. Let's go! He's dragging the whole service down for the team. This is fucking dire. I'm in the weeds, guys. Meanwhile, in the red kitchen, another hiccup occurred as a raw lamb dish resurfaced. Sabrina tried to deflect blame by insisting it had been sent out as medium well, but Chef Ramsay quickly called her out for trying to shift responsibility onto the customers. Well, we're arguing the customer's wrong. No, Chef. Raw pork, cooked lamb. Now you're blaming the customer. No, Chef. Come here. Yes, Chef. I'm Ejection! I was hoping for it. Things were getting super tense as Chef Ramsay got more and more fed up. He basically told off Sabrina for trying to pass the blame onto someone else and Andy for still messing up in the kitchen. Chef Ramsay had had enough. He was so fed up with all the mistakes that he just called it quits. Telling both kitchens to stop cooking and ending the chaotic service then and there. You fuck off, will you? The chef. Well, of course, the blue kitchen tanked all because of Andy. Screwing your team. Yes, I am, chef. Andy couldn't get his temperatures right. And then the red team sank because of Sabrina. But let's see who gets the boot. Sabrina. Can you believe it? Jim didn't even get nominated to leave, and yet he was the one sent packing. It's just unbelievable. I mean, sure, his service wasn't perfect, but compared to Andy and Sabrina, who were total disasters that night, it just doesn't make sense. Chef Ramsay said Jim lacked passion, but come on, I think he was just more laid back, you know? It's like there's dead mobs inside. Show some of them, will you? Or piss off. Just because he wasn't yelling doesn't mean he lacked passion. Introverts deserve justice, too. Remember what the season's winner said this? Just slice through it, will you? Yes, yeah? Chef. Grab your towel. Yeah. Also, remember when he mentioned he wouldn't change who he was for any job on his way out? At first, I thought he meant Chef Ramsay's aggressive kitchen style, but now, I'm thinking maybe it was about the producers or directors pulling the strings. But wait, there's more! You won't want to miss this next part. In the fifth episode of the second season, the blue team had managed to serve half of the main courses to the dining room, and trust me, those two hours were one hell of a chaotic service. But just then, Jean-Philippe walked up with something that could shake the entire place up. He brought an entree back into the kitchen because it was cold as ice and covered in breadcrumbs. Now, when Chef Ramsay confronted Keith Green about the dish being way too cold, he had the audacity to serve up some attitude. I mean, what was he thinking when he said this? No, no, it, 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 I, I didn't I, it, send it, it like it, that. I guarantee yeah, it, Chef. Okay. But you see, Keith couldn't care less. He was acting all nonchalant and didn't even bother to look Chef Ramsay in the eyes. On the other hand, Ramsay had enough and schooled him by saying this. Oh, you want to be chippy? Turn you around like a f***ing five-year-old. But, well, he wasn't done yet. Just to shake things up, Chef Ramsay then put Keith in charge and instructed him to lead Heather West and Garrett Tell because this is what he felt. Those two, yeah, are cooking like donkeys. Now, many viewers felt that his elimination in episode 9 over Virginia Dahlbeck was unjustified. In fact, fans think that he was right when he said this. 
personally think that you have a hard on for Virginia. And well, according to this Redditor, Keith was the standout male for the entire season and the only one with any kind of real consistency. But despite being a better performer and a much better leader than Virginia, Keith was eliminated after just one subpar performance on the pass. Now, here's something we have to ask ourselves. Is that even fair? Well, it looks like this next viewer was also shocked at the turn of events. He even went on to say that he just doesn't understand the show at times. It looks like Keith has managed to earn quite a few fans during his time on the show. Because this Redditor thinks that he should have been in the finale, and that would have been an epic showdown to look forward to. But despite winning challenges on his own and performing better in services, Virginia mercilessly played the whole age card against them when, let me remind you, there wasn't much of an age gap to begin with. Sadly, if you ask me, I think Keith had been dealt a bad hand his entire life. The entire Hell's Kitchen community was deeply saddened to hear about the tragic passing of Keith in Southampton on August 15th of 2012. His body was discovered face down at the shore of Wyandanch Beach by a father and his daughter who promptly dialed 911 upon making the grim discovery. Keith, aged only 35 at the time, seemed to have ventured out for a swim in the surf only to find himself caught in a treacherous current that claimed his life. Keith's presence in the restaurant community of Southampton was remarkable. He served as the head chef at Schmidt's Seafood Market in North Sea and Schmidt's Market in Southampton Village. His untimely demise sent shockwaves throughout the entire local community, touching the lives of many who had come to know him and appreciate his contributions. And since Hell's Kitchen continues to carry its legendary name and is not renamed to Donkey's Kitchen like Chef Ramsay suggested, I think we should all take a moment to thank Keith for that. Now, Chef Ramsay probably came up with that because he was frustrated, but this time he was pissed as hell. I mean, how many times have you seen Chef Ramsay react like this? Look at me, eyes! Not as as I am! He fucking are! Donkey! Alright, let's dive into the dinner service of season 5, which was utter chaos. In the 10th episode, Giovanni was holding it down at the meat station among the final 6 contestants. But it looks like things weren't going according to plan. It was a make or break moment where they had to survive the entire service from one kitchen and only the creme de la creme would stay in the game. But here's the kicker, Giovanni couldn't resist the temptation of playing peekaboo with the convection oven, opening and closing it like a kid with a toy. Chef Ramsay, always on the prowl, warned him that his oven shenanigans might come back to haunt him sometime later that night. And well, has Chef Ramsay ever been wrong? Fast forward to when Giovanni Filippone sent up Ben Wolonka's chicken special, you won't believe how it turned out. What is that? Giovanni's best. Is that like a chewed up bit of chicken from the dog here? The raw drumstick that landed on the plate made Chef Ramsay think that Giovanni had already given up. And as far as Chef Ramsay was concerned, that was a culinary crime scene. But Giovanni didn't want to give up. He asked for another minute to refire the chicken, however, there seemed to be a problem. He had no clue how to make the dish. Naturally, even his second attempt failed. With no other choice left, Chef Ramsay had to break the news to Ben that his special was turning into a tragedy. And what can I say, he really didn't mince his words at all. Your special has now become not very special, thanks to dick face there. But did Giovanni take it well? Of course not. He felt downright offended, and instead of sucking it up, he chose to defend himself. Yeah, but I'm not dick face chef. And that was all it took for Chef Ramsay to lose his shit. No, I don't give a fuck. Dick face. Wow, that was quite an outburst. But no matter how much fans love Chef Ramsay's creative insults, some viewers think that this was an extremely exaggerated reaction. Chef Ramsay was being way too explosive when all Giovanni did was try to stand up for himself and say that he was better. I mean, forget about flipping over, this viewer also thinks that Giovanni's elimination was a scam. Well, I think I would have reacted in a way more fierce way than Chef Ramsay, to be honest. I mean, you know how things could get really frustrating in the kitchen. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section down below. Now, do you remember this time from Season 3 when contestants were desperately trying to test Chef Ramsay's patience? That honestly just happened? That's it. That's dry. Yeah, Josh, that just happened. Chef Ramsay had just caught Joshua Waller holding up a dried chicken. And what else could he do with it other than slamming it on the table? I mean, there's no way he was going to send that out. You see, Chef Ramsay was already frustrated with the rest of the blue team's failures during the second episode of Season 3. Right from the raw Wellingtons to the way that Josh screwed up his timings, Chef Ramsay had a bad feeling about the entire service. Wondering how bad? Well, take a look at this. 
sinking like a Titanic. Right now, nothing is happening. That's quite the wreckage. But don't worry, no billionaires were harmed during the making of this video. Okay, jokes aside, this definitely happened. You donkey. You can't even do a risotto. You know that. Yeah, I could tell you that Chef Ramsay meant every single word that he said here. I mean, how could you blame him, huh? This man was frustrated to his very core. So much so that he berated the entire blue team for their weak performance and shocked everyone by doing this. F*** off out of here. Get out. Get out. Wow, that was quite humiliating. But he probably had it coming anyway because I've never seen anyone compare food to this. Food is sex. But I want to make people feel like they just had great sex. Well, that's what overconfidence looks like to me. You see, Josh never took a break from making idiotic mistakes throughout. A Reddit user once asked, what black jacket chefs do you think are worse than Matt from season four? And the overwhelming responses point towards, who else? This guy right here, Josh. Now, fans of the show already know that Josh earned himself the notorious nickname of Spaghetti Josh. And if you feel lost, let me help you with that. You see, Josh had managed to cook up plates of pasta and risotto before they were even ordered. So when Chef Ramsay noticed that Josh had already cooked a risotto when there were no orders on board yet, he was definitely confused. Like seriously, how do you explain all that pasta piling up on the hot plate? Quite understandably, Chef Ramsay couldn't hold back his frustration and left no stone unturned to chew out Josh for wasting money. And guess what he labeled him this time? What a fucking donut. Yeah, serves him right. However, to add fuel to the fire, Chef Ramsay then discovered that Josh had cooked spaghetti without an order for any coming in. When he asked if he would make the same mistake at his own restaurant, Josh sheepishly replied with a no, claiming that it was a mere oversight. Well, there's no way Chef Ramsay was gonna let him off the hook so easily, which is why he made it clear to him by saying this. Gummiest Italian restaurant in Venice Beach. Cook spaghetti to order, you donkey. So, you see what's happening here? Not only was the pressure mounting, but Josh was also pushing Ramsay to his limits. It took an entire hour into the service for Josh's appetizers to finally start making their way out of the kitchen. However, that joy was very short-lived as one order of risotto was sent back for being undercooked. This sent Chef Ramsay into a fit of rage and he went about berating Josh for his culinary blunder and yelling about how he was screwing up the tables. Enough was enough for Ramsay and you could almost see him fuming. Yes, Chef. Take that off! I'm fucking up out of it! Get out! This was probably Chef Ramsay at his most volcanic and unforgiving because he didn't stop there. Oh no, there was way more to come. Give me the fucking jacket! Fucking useless sack of shit! Yeah, so he basically just chased Josh until he was completely out of sight. And well, that's one brutal way to kick someone out of the kitchen. But I do have to add, Josh has turned out to be a true survivor. From what I heard last, he's now working as an executive chef at Kung Fu Kitchen and Sushi in the Catalina Hotel and Beach Club. But I really hope he's firing up orders that have actually been requested. Speaking of which, nothing could beat how this contestant set his station on fire. And when I say on fire, I mean quite literally. You're cooking in a burnt pan! Leave it! Leave it! Ah, Tom, what a train wreck you are, man. And after almost setting the whole kitchen on fire, what do you think Chef Ramsay could say other than this? They're gonna blow fire in your face, you f***ing donkey! Okay, so I know you're itching to find out how bad things got, so let me give you a quick little refresher. So during the dinner service, Tom Polly was assigned to the meat station. This dude was ready to conquer the culinary challenges of Hell's Kitchen, but little did he know that this night would be anything but smooth sailing. As the order started rolling in and the heat turned up, Heather West, one of his teammates, questioned the temperature of his pan. And what does Tom do? Right out the gate, he dropped a bombshell on Chef Ramsay. He confessed that he hadn't started cooking the quail despite the order being placed an hour ago. Needless to say, Ramsay's frustration began to simmer. To make things worse, when it was time to serve those delectable Wellingtons, Tom proudly presented a batch that turned out to be undercooked. Luckily, Keith came to the rescue and assured Chef Ramsay that they could be ready in just about four minutes. Whew, thank goodness. That's a huge crisis averted right there. But things had to screw up all over again. Because just as the tensions reached the boiling point, disaster struck. You see, the duck in Tom's pan decided it had enough of the heat and started to burn. 
Chef Ramsay, in an act of rescue, instructed Tom to step aside and salvage the sizzling pan from becoming a charred catastrophe. Actually, that is rather a very gentle way of putting what happened into words. Because this is how things turned out. You're cooking in a burnt pan, you dick! Feeling the mounting pressure, Chef Ramsay called upon Keith to take over the meat station, asking him to see to it that he doesn't cook anything. But Tom should have just shut up. Because when he dared to question Chef Ramsay's instructions, his concerns weren't met with the greatest reaction. Shut it and watch. Shut it! Holy, the dinner service was a total disaster. And what do you know, both teams were declared joint losers before being kicked out of the service. However, Tom was the only contestant who was on the receiving end of this. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. How about enough? Well, I did feel a bit bad for him, but again, it doesn't really matter because he got eliminated the same night anyway. But Chef Ramsay doesn't always use his favorite go-to word of endearment, but just in times when he's angry. Because turns out, he would also do this. That's a monkfish head, you fuck. Donkey. Well, that was more a playful jab than an angry meltdown at Michael Dussault's inability to identify salmon. Yeah, so basically, in season 14, Michael was more clueless than a fish out of water. I mean, it's a salmon you were supposed to look for, so how hard could it be? As you may remember, in episode 3, with 16 chefs remaining, 8 on each team, the stage was set for the epic Alaskan fish challenge. The culinary battleground featured four Alaskan-based fishes being trout, cod, salmon, and halibut. For the first part of the challenge, the teams had to play matchmaker with the fish, grabbing their heads and tails to create the perfect pairs. The blue team swiftly reeled in victory, earning themselves a precious 5-minute head start. It's safe to say that they were off to a fantastic beginning. Adding to the excitement, esteemed guest judge Michael Simorusti stepped into the mix ready to cast his discerning palate upon the dishes. Chef Ramsay and sous chef James couldn't help but notice his lack of focus and his peculiar aversion to making flatbreads, a task that fell under his responsibility. However, Millie Medley swooped in to save the day, leaving Michael in the dust. You're so keen about getting your stuff ready. How about looking overall? But that's not the end of it. In a moment of sheer carelessness, Michael decided it was a brilliant idea to place a scorching pan on a nearby rack. Now, this could leave a lot of contestants with some serious burns, but Michael didn't seem to get the point. What are you doing? It was over here, Chef, burning. Shut up! Can you wait till I fuck finish? As if that wasn't enough, towards the end of the service, Michael, in a rush, sent out his garnishes despite Nick Bond's plea for just one more minute. And what did you expect to happen other than this? There's a third degree burn yes, waiting chef. to happen. I can't carry that level of incompetence. However, this next chef found himself in a heated situation, quite literally. Giacomo was determined to turn the tides of misfortune for the blue team and break their losing streak during the prep. Taking charge at the meat station during the dinner service, he was determined to prove his worth. Ah, uh, only if everything went according to plan. He approached sous chef Scott, claiming that his oven wasn't heating up as well as it should. Scott, who looked rather perplexed, then discovered this. Dude, you don't have the fucking gas on, stupid! Ah, surely you're better than that, Giacomo. But wait till you see this moment when Chef Ramsay caught wind of Giacomo's oversight. Why is the oven not on? I'm not sure, Chef, I'm sorry. You're not sure, you donkey! And, well, this wasn't the end of the kitchen drama. Chef Ramsay, with his keen eyes, then questioned Giacomo about the pickness of the duck. In an attempt to save face, Giacomo argued that it wasn't cooked to perfection. So, sensing that something was amiss, Chef Ramsay then inquired about another duck which was resting. Unfortunately, Giacomo's claim of having one ready was nothing more than a white lie. Caught in his dishonesty, Giacomo quickly apologized and insisted that it was totally unintentional. Well, here's what I think would happen. Giacomo probably couldn't handle the heat himself, which is why he forgot to turn it on. Up next, we have Siobhan the Scallop Savior, or should I say Scallop Slayer? It all started when she was working her magic on those delicate scallops, but oh boy, things took a twist. Chef Ramsay discovered a whole order of boiled scallops, and even Holly knew that they were messed up. I mean, tell me what you think of this. Take that. Yeah. There are some on here that were fine, Chef. The thing is, Siobhan's unwavering belief in her culinary skills left Chef Ramsay utterly infuriated. But that didn't stop him from tearing apart the scallops by explaining exactly what was wrong with them. Wishy-washy, not even seasoned, and you know what, more importantly, they're boiled. But she kept arguing, and we all know who disrespects the chain of command. You donkey! Yep, you heard it right, a donkey. 
But that wasn't all. Chef Ramsay was so done with her, and you could see it right here. She was chased out of the kitchen to eat her mistakes in the dining room, and I can't imagine how humiliating it must have been. This Reddit user made a thread on 10 reasons why donkeys get eliminated. They seem to have cracked the code on how Chef Ramsay makes his decisions on who goes home. Turns out, one of the top three reasons is not standing up for yourself. Siobhan allowed herself to be pushed around by every other contestant, and that's not an attribute of a good head chef. So, you see how some contestants earn the prestigious title just by doing some stupid things right there in the heat of the moment? Turns out, there are fans who are willing to pay for it. According to a story on The Hollywood Reporter, Chef Ramsay recounted an incident where somebody once offered him $25,000 just to call them a fucking donkey. And it was for their birthday. It looks like this dude has a serious humiliation kink. With that, let's move on to the all-new season of Hell's Kitchen, which is already off to a dramatic start. So, in the Signature Dish Challenge, we met Demir from Philadelphia. He began by stating how important this opportunity was for him to potentially gain some financial security. Coming from where I come from, North Philadelphia, you don't get a lot of opportunity. But would he be able to gain Chef Ramsay's confidence? Well, let's find out. His signature dish was linguine with coconut cream, and let me tell you, it looked absolutely delicious visually. Grilled lobster with coconut curry cream linguine. I definitely eat it, but there was a bit of a problem. Uh, linguine, is it fresh? No. Aw, oh, brother, surely you must have done your homework, right? Did you forget what happened to Monique from season 14 or Kevin from season 15? Oh, and of course, the great Mike Aresta from season 12. He was the fourth contestant from the blue team, ready to face off against Keisha. So, he had his dish ready to go, a plate of tortellini with tomatoes, and he was thinking he had it in the bag. But here's where things got a bit cheesy. Turns out, the filling for his tortellini was far from fresh. It's a packaged tortellini. You could see the disappointment in Chef Ramsay's eyes. And, of course, there was really only one place that the dish belonged after that little revelation, the trash. Now, instead of owning up to his mistake, Mike started to question Chef Ramsay's judgment. I mean, why trash it, right? It couldn't be that bad. It wasn't dog food. Uh, his words, not mine. That's bullshit, bro. What did you just say? But Chef Ramsay immediately called Mike up to the front in response. He wanted an explanation for the outburst, and Mike was totally caught off guard. Dude was at a total loss for words. That's when Chef Ramsay made it clear that there was no place for insubordination or disrespect in his kitchen. Hear, hear. You got anything to say to me? Say it to my face, not my back. You gotta shut the off. And then, of course, there was also Kimberly from season 16, the executive chef and catering manager of a Latin infused sushi restaurant. Latin infused yep, sushi? We do Latin infused sushi. Yeah, believe me, Chef Ramsay was as confused as the rest of us probably were. He was probably gearing up for some Japanese inspired dish, but Kimberly had other plans. What was her dish, you ask? Some del pasta, clams, and a vibrant tomatoey sauce that practically screamed flavor. It all sounded promising, didn't it? Sadly, it didn't live up to the expectations. Chef Ramsay took one look at Kimberly's dish and let it rip. The whole thing was a disaster. But why was this the case? Well, just watch this. Homemade pasta? No, unfortunately not. Obviously fresh clams. I used one can of canned clam. So it should go without saying that she probably walked away with just one point after this mess, right? Now, let's get back to Demir. The flavor profile of his dish was far from redeemable, too. No, I'm not around because the lobsters just taste bland. Chef Ramsay asked Carmen, his opponent, to taste the dish and rate it while he was at it. Carmen gave it a disappointing two. You're missing salt. He's not only missing salt, he's allergic to salt. Damn, that was unnecessarily humiliating. But did Chef Ramsay agree with Carmen's evaluation? Yeah, he wasn't one bit impressed. Well, I think you're generous. For me, it's a one. Demir, predictably, was given the lowest score in that challenge. He should have heeded the wise words of Devin. You gotta be better than that. If you use box pasta, you've just disrespected Chef Ramsay. Amen. But hey, if we've learned anything from Hell's Kitchen, it's that the signature dish challenge isn't the be-all end-all of how far any given contestant is gonna go. We had Latasha in season 13 with her grilled watermelon, who ended up as the winner. We have Danny, who was, uh, politely asked to shove the grilled bananas up his ass. And, of course, there was Petroza's funny little Halloween scare. But none could compare to the Season 7 winner, Holly Ugalt. She was the second contestant from the red team to face Chef Ramsay's judgment, and she was up against Benjamin. Her dish was a banana leaf wrapped halibut, which sounds fine on paper, I guess, but Chef Ramsay's reaction was nothing short of shocking. 
The famous chef immediately trashed the banana leaf, which put her on the defensive. She claimed that it was a classic northern Indian dish. But Chef Ramsay, hearkening back to his own extensive experiences in India, told her that he'd never seen food anywhere near what she'd given him anywhere near India. I've been to India. I haven't seen food like that. Things took a turn for the worse when the famous chef took a bite and promptly spat it out. Cultural touchstone or not, the flavor wasn't doing her any favors. Holly, that was a disaster. Despite the rocky start, it was an absolute delight watching her journey to the very top. It'll be so fun to follow Demir's arc on the show and see if he uses this setback as fuel to fly to the top. I'm rooting for you, brother. And of course, this one particular contestant gave Chef Ramsay a really hard time. You scare me because I turned my back and was screwed. So on the Italian night, Melissa took charge of the appetizer station. Things got off to a rocky start when she realized she forgot a second order of ravioli while serving the first batch. Where's the other ravioli? I put the ravioli. No, right now, Chef. Rushing to rectify the error, her second attempt landed on the table undercooked, inviting Chef Ramsay's stern criticism for her haste. He then accused her of disrespecting him with her oversight. You're just rushing out and you're just treating me like a fucking idiot. Hoping to recover from this blunder, Melissa only ended up running into yet another. She faltered with basic multiplication, confidently asserting that 3 times 3 equals, well... 3 threes are 6. I was counting the pants, yeah. Chef. Chef Ramsay was completely taken aback and issued a warning expressing concern about her ability and stating that she was making him uneasy. You can't even count to 9. You scare me. Later on, during the prom night dinner service, Melissa took charge on the meat station. Her performance, however, turned into a series of regrettable missteps that left Chef Ramsay and her teammates reeling. Just 30 minutes into the service, Melissa presented her cook filet mignons. This premature move irked Chef Ramsay immensely since the red team had only managed to serve appetizers to a few tables and were nowhere near getting to the entrees. We sent three tables of appetizers and you're sticking all the beef in the oven. Chef Ramsay's frustration boiled over, leading him to confront Melissa aggressively, questioning if she even wanted to be there. Why don't you make my life easier and just f*** off home? His disbelief peaked when he counted a staggering 23 overcooked fillets, rendering them all unusable for the rest of the night. It's 23 on board, Chef. So what? Why are you cooking them now? What's more, the shock and horror on her teammates' faces mirrored the severity of the situation. I can't keep on telling you every f***ing service! Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay's patience dwindled and dwindled further as Melissa continued to falter. She committed the grave error of slicing into a piece of beef that turned out to be raw, only to attempt to salvage it by putting it back in the oven. Chef Ramsay, visibly dismayed, scolded her, instructing her emphatically to refrain from slicing beef if it wasn't cooked to the desired level. Don't slice them. Rule number one. This is slice them. So here's an important lesson, guys. Never interrupt an angry Ramsay. His frustration was understandable, and her shortcomings significantly impacted that team's performance, resulting in a night filled with both waste and gross incompetence in the kitchen. But the next service was even more pathetic. Her first attempt at sending out scallops for Rob's salad fell so short as they arrived raw. This is your salad! It's raw! The second batch she sent out ended up burned, further compounding the problem. Despite her efforts to rectify the situation with a refire, Rob rejected her third attempt because of how overcooked it was. Frustration mounted as none of her tries seemed to hit the mark. How long got a f***ing scallop? Melissa, how long? It all came to a head when Melissa admitted that she had completely run through their entire inventory of scallops, having ruined a total of 7 pounds of the delicate seafood. I cooked the shit out of all the scallops. I f***ed the team, chef. Damn right you did. Because of this incredibly terrible blunder, the blue team was forced to pivot from the scallop salad to a rock shrimp alternative. And Chef Ramsay was horrified. Oh my god. Take the fucking plate. Pass it around. Though initially not among the nominees chosen by the blue team, Melissa eventually found herself in the hot seat, joining Boris and Sabrina along with Nana from the red team. During her plea to stay, she attempted to showcase a positive outlook on her time with the blue team, mentioning it as a new experience before conceding to her struggles. Chef Ramsay, however, probed her honesty, leading Melissa to admit to significant difficulties rather than just a minor setback. Why can't you be honest with me? Struggle a lot, Chef. Uh, different jacket, same ship. Quote of the day. I mean, thankfully, Melissa's journey came to an end due to her repeated nominations and the lack of visible improvement after transitioning to the blue team. Her inability to perform consistently and her persistent struggles ultimately led to her elimination from the competition. Show of hands who was surprised that that happened. 
Now, what happened in the seventh dinner service of season five was somehow even more infuriating. You see, Andrea was handling the appetizer station alongside Carol. The evening took a dramatic turn when a dish of undercooked pasta was returned. Instead of just taking responsibility, Carol unfairly blamed Andrea for the mistake. Who's running the appetizer? I am. Well then run it then! Fair question. The situation escalated when it was revealed that Carol had tasted the undercooked pasta herself before sending it out, knowing that it wasn't right. This forced Chef Ramsay to take a drastic action. They were out there and sit on that table and eat that. Both of you, out there. Yeah, in a move I'm sure shocked nobody, Chef Ramsay promptly removed both Andrea and Carol from the kitchen, instructing them to go to the dining room and eat what they had just served. You reap what you sow, I guess. He made it clear that they wouldn't be allowed back until they acknowledged and fixed their mistake. Just goes to show, pick your battles when it comes to Chef Ramsay. It's not undercooked, it's raw! Raw, Carol! The famous chef's face expressed sheer disbelief at Carol's shocking decision to serve a dish that she knew was undercooked. Why aren't you tasting? His surprise and disappointment were evident, highlighting the significance of meeting basic cooking standards and taking responsibility for one's actions in a professional kitchen. Now, during the 10th dinner service, things didn't get any better. This time, Andrea was stationed on the garnishes. She was caught prepping them before the entrees were even ready, and Chef Ramsay pointed out yet another crucial mistake. She was cooking potatoes in a cold pan. And you put the potatoes in, and not only that, but the pan's stone cold. As the service progressed, Chef Ramsay called out the next order, but Andrea's lack of response drew his attention. What's going? No answer. Already in a really sour mood, the famous chef confronted her about her inattentiveness. He asked her to repeat the order, only to be met with her inability to recall what had just been called out. Again? I have no idea, chef. Oh my god almighty. This became a reoccurring issue, as the famous chef highlighted her ongoing struggle with keeping up. He then requested the rest of the team to recite the order, but to everyone's surprise, no one could accurately remember it. This led to Chef Ramsay's frustration boiling over. Two Wellington, two chicken, one lamb, one dory. Amidst the chaos, Andrea continued to falter, failing to recall the order even after Chef Ramsay just repeated it. I have no idea, Chef. You have no idea. I have no idea, Hey, come here, you. I think this woman was zoning out, man. This final misstep led Chef Ramsay to decisively eject her from the kitchen, sending her out into the dining area. Just about ready to exit through the front door, Andrea was stopped by Jean-Philippe, who encouraged her to stand her ground and not give up without a fight. So now you need to be strong, go back in there, and give it your best shot. Yep, he's truly more than a maitre de, you know? I hope he makes a comeback. But Andrea's little zoning out episode really reminds me of Jeremy from season 11. Right from the get-go, he was 100% lost. During the signature dish challenge, Jeremy's lack of skill became glaringly obvious, despite his lofty self-declared status as a lead cook. What is it? I think it's a, uh, I think it's real. I'm sorry, chef. Ultimately, he settled on a belief over certainty. Things took a turn for the worse when Chef Ramsay found fault with the texture of Jeremy's dish. When you slice into a steak of that quality, you destroy the fibers and the texture because you're stuffing. The following day, while the men's team seemed to be in sync during the prep session, Jeremy stood out as the odd one out. He appeared utterly bewildered, bombarding his teammates with a barrage of questions, struggling to keep up. I don't know how to make a pointer. I'm just a little concerned right now. The real challenge hit during the service when Chef Ramsay fired off the orders. He called for three halibuts, one bass, and one chicken. Unfortunately, Jeremy stumbled, unable to accurately relay the order, requiring Dan's correction, much to Chef Ramsay's visible irritation. Three, three halibut, uh, two, two, uh. Despite Chef Ramsay's patience in repeating the ticket, Jeremy still couldn't respond, leaving poor Ramsay exasperated and disappointed. Get out! During the breakfast service's first order, Jeremy failed to provide any answers, much to Chef Ramsay's understandable frustration. To worsen the situation, when confronted about his inactivity, his confession was, well, poor. Can I get an answer from you? Yes, you can. I wasn't able to hear it, Chef. Oh, the issues just kept piling up as Jeremy grappled with fundamental communication and timing. When Anthony indicated 30 seconds for his omelette, Jeremy seemed utterly unable to comprehend, repeatedly seeking clarification on the time needed. Jeremy standing in the middle of the air like that with his breakfast. Jeremy, walk! 
The situation escalated even further when Jeremy presented a croissant at the pass, missing a crucial component, the smoked salmon. Instead of promptly resolving the issue, Jeremy strolled to the kitchen's back and casually asked Dan for a plate, seemingly oblivious to the urgency of the service. What's even more astonishing is that the plate that he brought to the pass turned out to be the last thing he should have picked. Some disgusting pig brought me the sample scrambled eggs. Absolutely disgusting. Speaking of, up next, we have the most disgusting chef to have ever appeared on the show. It's Jason, who won Hell's Kitchen, pocket full of money, beat women off with a stick for God's sake. I'm, of course, talking about Jason Underwood. During his second dinner service, Jason became the anchor dragging the entire team down, causing a significant slowdown in the service. As the entrees were being prepared, Chef Ramsay noticed that Jason's halibut was served raw from the hot plate. He needs to hear those two words more often, like more regularly. To drive the severity of this mistake home, Chef Ramsay insisted that Jason, Matt, and sous chef Scott touch the raw fish. I mean, we can pretty much bend over and kiss our asses goodbye. This led to a complete standstill in the team's ability to send out food. Sometime later, when a halibut dish cooked by Jason was returned for being undercooked, Chef Ramsay rightly directed his frustration towards him. When you're sending me raw fish, fucking cold, it's fucking raw. Despite Jason's attempt to deny and lie about the mistake, Chef Ramsay reached his breaking point. His disappointment and anger culminated in a decision to shut down the restaurant for the night. He really saw no other recourse in the face of repeated errors and falsehoods. Shut it down! Get the fuck out! Before the next service, he strutted in thinking he was leagues ahead of the competition, but his lack of attention to the menu proved to be a costly oversight. Chef Ramsay singled out Jason for the dessert station during the team's setup, humorously cautioning him against sneaking any treats. However, when quizzed about the desserts, Jason stumbled, failing to provide the correct answers. The famous chef promptly sent him packing to the dorms, urging him to study the menu thoroughly. After the dorm, in the mirror, and read the dessert. During the start of the service, Jason was conspicuously absent as he dedicated time to brush up on the menu. However, once he began preparing the desserts, it was evident that he was clueless, relying on outdated stereotypes by stating that desserts were best left to the women. I've hit my breaking point. I'm at the bottom. Anyway, Laros then stepped in to assist by informing him that his creme brulees were ready, a fact that he found hard to believe. That's cooked! But when Jason took his souffles out of the oven, they resembled muffins stuck in a cup. Faced with Chef Ramsay's inquiry about the dessert mishaps, Jason finally decided to confess. When asked for a solution, he suggested a mix of sugar, butter, and cocoa powder to coat the rim, a suggestion that left Chef Ramsay visibly disheartened. I mean, look at his face. Sugar, butter, and the cocoa powder. So much so, the famous chef retreated to the hot plates and what he did next was so disheartening to see. That has to be the worst meltdown the famous chef has ever had. But Roseanne's fuck up on the garnishes in her fifth service comes pretty close. The third service of season three had Joanna handling the appetizer station for the last time. Her plan was to lead with her risottos, but things quickly went south. Her first batch of risotto turned out to be way too salty, causing a mess for the entire team. It's soft, it's salty, it's just, it's crap. And no, it didn't end there. When she tried again, the order had to be redone because Bonnie's scallops were really undercooked. And this leads us into mess up number two. Smell that, hey you, don't you yeah, come here you, hello. Yeah. yeah, turns out Joanna's senses were on vacation. I mean, how could she not smell something as awful as that? At this point, Chef Ramsay was genuinely scared. How can you do that? I didn't smell the crap. But wait, why did he even have rotten crab in the pantry in the first place? So, moving on from one rotten mess to another, what happened during the fourth dinner service of season two was truly shocking. But do you know what's even more shocking? The fact that you could become a member of my channel by just clicking on the tab right here. From making recommendations for future videos to earning a chance to win some crazy prizes along the way, there's a lot to look forward to. Anyway, as for the blue team who delved into preparing the entrees, luck wasn't working in their favor. Tom dropped a bombshell on Chef Ramsay. He confessed that the quail, which had been ordered an hour ago, hadn't even hit the heat yet. And I don't even have to tell you how Chef Ramsay reacted to that. What time did I call out the order? An hour ago. This admission was followed by the revelation that the first batch of Wellingtons needed was undercooked. 
Oh no, oh come on, it's a little too pink. Keith reassured Chef Ramsay that they could be ready within four minutes or so, trying to salvage the situation. But the famous chef wasn't pleased with the miscommunication. What fucking line of communication is that on? About an hour and a half into the service, Ramsay's irritation grew as he noticed Tom organizing his cooking for future tables instead of focusing on immediate orders. The man was disregarding Chef Ramsay's instructions. Wait, now I have the ones there. Not in order there. Accused of lacking passion, things took a turn for the worse when the duck in Tom's pan started burning. You're cooking in a burnt pan, you fucking dick! Chef Ramsay intervened, instructing Tom to leave it and remove the pan from the damn stove. Oh man, he was seriously on the verge of crying. They're gonna blow fire in your face, you fucking donkey! But I'm sure there have been many more times when Chef Ramsay felt like he was walking right out of the kitchen. And if you can think of any, make sure to drop your thoughts in the comment section down below. Plus, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, if you think this video was crazy, then make sure to check out this next one right here since it's even better.